All right, so let's proceed to create our Lambda function. And again, just make sure you are in the same region, so North Virginia, uh, because it needs to be the same one as the Cloud9 environment here. So we're gonna go ahead and create this function and we're going to need to name it. I'm going to name it uh, the Ferengi Alliance, okay? And I'm gonna say contact form, all right? And I believe I spelled that correctly there. I'm just using that as a reference up here. And we uh, need to choose our runtime. So we have a bunch of different languages. So we have Ruby, Python, Java, et cetera, et cetera. We are using Node.js. Um, and so now we, uh, you can use 10 or 8.10. It's generally recommended to use 10, but there are use cases where you might need to use eight and six is no longer supported. Um, so that used to be an option here, but it is off of the table now, so to speak. So um, we need to also set up our permissions. We're not going to have a role, um, so we're going to need to create one here. So let's go ahead and let uh, AWS Lambda create one for us, and we will hit create function, okay? And we're just going to have to wait a few minutes here for it to uh, create our Lambda function, okay? Not too long. And uh, here's our function. Great. So it's been created here. And on the left-hand side, we have our triggers. So for our case, it's going to be API Gateway. And on the right-hand side, we have our permissions. And so you can see by default, it's giving us access to CloudWatch logs. Um, and we are going to need uh, DynamoDB and SNS in here. So we're going to have to update those permissions. Just giving a quick scroll down here. Uh, we actually do have a, a little Cloud9 environment embedded in here. And we could have actually done all the code within here. But I'm trying to uh, set you up to be able to edit this web page. And also, um, if, the, if your Lambda function is too large, um, then you actually can't use this environment here. And so you'd have to do this anyway. So I figured... Um, we might as well learn how to do it the Cloud9 way, all right? But you could edit it in line, upload a zip file. So as long as it's under 10 megabytes, you can upload it and you should more or less be able to edit all those files. Uh, but if it gets too big, then you have to supply it via S3, all right? So um, yeah, we need to get those additional permissions. And so we're going to need to um, edit our, um, our role, which was created for us by default, all right? So let's make our way over to um, I am. So I'm just gonna type in I am here. And once this loads here, we're going to go to the left-hand side. We're going to go to our roles, and we're going to start typing Ferengi, so F-E-R. Okay, there's that role. And we're going to add, attach a couple of policies here. So we're going to give it, um, we said SNS, right? We'll give it full access. And we're going to give it uh, DynamoDB. And we'll give it full access. Now, um, for the associate level, it's totally appropriate to use full access. But when you become a native best professional, you'll learn that you'll want to pare these down to only give access to exactly the actions that you need. But uh, I don't want to uh, burden you with uh, that much um, IM knowledge at this uh, time. All right. But you'll see in a moment because when we go back to, uh, I'm sorry, Lambda function and we refresh here. Okay. I'm just hitting uh, the manual refresh there. We're going to see what we have access to. So this is now what we have access to, and we have a bunch of stuff. So we don't just have access to DynamoDB. We have access to DynamoDB Accelerator. We're not going to use that. We have access to EC2. We don't need that. We uh, we have access to auto scaling. We probably don't need that data pipeline. So that's the only problem with using those full access things is you get uh, a bit more than what you want. But anyway, for our purpose, it's totally, totally fine. Okay, and so now that we uh, have our role, we want to uh, get our code uh, uh, uploaded here. So what I want you to do is I want you to uh, go back to Cloud9, all right, and we're going to bundle this here. So uh, down below, we are in the correct directory environment, uh, but just to make sure we are in the same place, I want you to type cd tilde, which is for home, and then type forward slash environment, okay, and then we're going to type forward slash function. All right. I want to show you a little a little thing that I discovered is that this top directory that says Ferengi Alliance is actually the environment directory. For some reason, they name it differently for your purpose. But just so you know, environment is this folder here. Okay. And so now we know our node version is going to be 10. I want you to type in NVM, which stands for node version uh, manager, type NVM list. And we're going to see what versions of node we have installed and which one is being used. And by default, it's using 10. So we're already in great shape to um, be installing our dependencies in the right version. So I want you to do NPM install or just I, which is the short form there. Okay. And it's going to install all the dependencies we need. We can see they were installed under the node modules directory there. So we have everything we want. And so now we just need to uh, download this here and uh, bring it into uh, our Lambda function. 
So we are going to need to uh, zip this here and then upload it to the Lambda um, interface here. So what I want you to do is I want you to right click the function folder here and click download. And that's going to download this to our uh, downloads folder here. Okay. And then I want you to unzip it. Okay. Because we actually just want the contents of it. We don't want this folder here. All right. And the idea is that we are just including this node modules, which we didn't have uh, earlier here. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, compress that. And then we're going to have an archive. And I want you to make your way back to the Lambda interface here. And we're going to drop down and upload a zip. All right. And we are going to upload that archive. All right. And then we will hit save so that it actually uploads the archive. It doesn't take too long because you can see that it's less than a megabyte. And so we can access our files in here. All right. Um, and again, if this was too large, then it would actually not allow us to even edit in here and we'd still have to do cloud nine. All right. So um, now that our code is uploaded, now we can uh, go and try and run it or better yet, we will need to learn how to sync it back to here uh, so that we can further edit it. Okay. So what I want to just show you quickly here in Cloud9 is if you go to the right hand side to AWS resources, we have this Lambda thing here. And again, if we were in the wrong region, if we were in US East 2 uh, uh, in our Cloud9 environment, we wouldn't be able to uh, see our function here. But here is the remote function. And what we can do is if we want to continuously edit this, we can pull it to Cloud9 and edit it here and then push it back and upload it. So this is going to save us the trouble of continuously uh, zipping the folder. Now you could automate this process uh, with CloudFormation or other um, uh, other serverless frameworks, but um, you know I find this is very easy and it's also a good opportunity to learn the functionalities of Cloud9. So now that we have the remote function here, I just want you to uh, press uh, this button here to import the Lambda function to our local environment. And it's saying, would you like to import it? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And so now this is the function here. And this is the one we're going to be working with. So we can just ignore uh, this one here. All right. And so whenever we make a change, we can then uh, push this back. All right. And we might end up having to uh, do that here or not. But I just wanted to show you that uh, you have this ability. All right. So actually, let's actually try syncing it back. We're just going to make some kind of superficial change, something that doesn't matter. I just want to show you that you can do it. And we're going to just, just type in anything here. So I'm just going to type in Ferengi, just a comment. Okay. And I'm going to uh, save this file here. See how that was appearing? Now it's green. So that says it's been changed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and click this. And I'm going to uh, re import this function. All right. So I'm just going to hit um, this uh, deploy. All right. And that's going to go ahead and uh, send the changes back. All right. To the uh, remote function here. Okay. And I'm just going to hit a refresh here. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the Lambda environment here. I'm just going to give it a refresh here. And let's see if our comment shows up. OK. And so there you are. So that's how we can uh, sync changes between Cloud9 and here. And again, if this file was too large, we wouldn't even be able to see this. So Cloud9 would be our only uh, convenience for uh, doing this. So. Now that we um, know how to do that, let's actually learn how to uh, test our function. So uh, let's uh, proceed to doing that. All right, so here I am in my email and we literally got this email in less than a minute. Uh, and here is the uh, information that has been provided to us. Uh, so there you go. Uh, our Lambda function is working as expected. And so now that uh, we have uh, that working, uh, the next uh, big thing is actually to hook up our um, actual um, uh, actual form um, to uh, this Lambda function. And so in order to do that, we are going to need to set up API Gateway um, so that uh, that uh, form has uh, somewhere to uh, send its data to. So let's proceed over to API Gateway and we are going to create our own API Gateway. Cool. Oh, so let's go ahead and hit that test button and see what we get this time around. Fingers crossed. And look, we got a, a, a success here. All right, so if we were to uh, want to take a look at uh, the results of this, if we go down to monitoring here, okay, and we go to uh, view CloudWatch logs, we can actually see our errors and our success rates, okay? So here we have a couple logs. I'm just going to open up this one here, all right? And so um, we can see here that the body was passed along. Um, and uh, it inserted into the DynamoDB uh, table there. 
um, and it also did the SNS response. And so these are all just the console logs that I have within the actual code. So if you're wondering where these are coming from, it's just these console logs here, okay? So I, I set those up so that I'd have an idea for, for that. So let's actually go take a look at DynamoDB and see if our record exists. And there it is, so it's added to the uh, database. So now the real question is, uh, have we gotten an email uh, 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 notification? And so I'm just gonna hop over to my email and we're gonna take a quick look now. So um, now let's go ahead and test our function out. And so we, what we can do here is uh, create a new uh, test event. All right, and so um, I prepared uh, one here for us. Okay, so we have a JSON um, with body, and then we have a stringified JSON, because that's how it would actually come in from API Gateway. All right, and so I'm just gonna do a contact form, test contact form, okay. And uh, hit create there. And so now we have uh, this thing that we can test out. All right, and so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit test. And we're going to get a failure and that's totally uh totally fine because if we scroll down it actually tells us that we have an undefined table name all right and the reason why we have an undefined table name is because we actually haven't configured our sns um uh topic uh like it's rn id or the dynamo db uh table so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to supply this a uh, function um, uh, with that information. And I believe we have them as environment variables. That's how they're specified. So if I was to uh, go back to Cloud9 here and we were to look maybe in DynamoDB, uh, I'm just looking at where we actually configure um, the actual table name here. Okay. Um, uh, there it is. So see where it says process ENV uh, table name. So that means it's expecting uh, a, a um, down here in the environment we are expecting uh, under our environment variables, where are our environment variables? Here they are. So we're expecting a table name. And we're also, for SNS, we are expecting the topic ARN, okay? So we need to go grab those two things there and we will have better luck this time around. So I'm gonna go and look for DynamoDB here. Okay, and I'm gonna also get SNS and we will go ahead and slot those in. So um, for our table, it's just called Ferengi Alliance, so that's not too complicated, okay? And we will just apply it there. And then for uh, SNS, we might actually have an additional topic here since the last time uh, we were here. And we need the ARN, so we're gonna go in here and grab this, okay? We need the ARN, all right? And so I'll paste that in there, and we will hit save, okay? And we will give this a another try.